In this video, we'll see how we can add an embossed or engraved effect to a logo in Inkscape. For this tutorial, we'll need this paper image, which you can find a link to in the description box below, and we'll need a logo of some kind. I'll be using this seal logo that I created a couple videos back, which you can also find a link to in the description. However, you can use a different logo if you want, or you can even do this with a text object. One thing to know, however, is that whatever we use needs to be a single path. So for example, if we want to use a text object, after we create one, we need to go to Path, Object to Path, which gives us a group of paths. We next need to ungroup the paths by going to Object, Ungroup. Finally, we can turn all of the paths into a single path by going to Path, Union. Okay, so first, I don't really like the color of this image that much, so I'm going to change it. To do this, with the image selected, I can go to Filters, Color, Colorize. Now I'll go ahead and check Live Preview here. Okay, so I've already played around with the settings here earlier. I have Harsh Light set to 0.7, Normal Light set to 1.1, and the Blend Modes both set to Normal. And in the Color tab up here, I have the color set to a brown with a somewhat low opacity. You can use the same settings I'm using, or try some different ones. I basically just wanted to make the image not look so boring. Okay, I'll click apply here and close this out. Alright, for the logo path, let's make it a blue for now. This will help the path stand out better when we start adding shadows and things to it. And we want to keep the original path here, because we'll be using it again later, so let's duplicate it. Which we can do either by right clicking it and choosing duplicate, or by using the shortcut Control D. Next, we'll center the duplicate on the image. To do this, we can hold Shift and click the image to add it to the selection. Then we can open the Align and Distribute dialog with this button up here. And we want to make sure to have Last Selected chosen here, which refers to the image. Then we can center the logo vertically on the image with this button, and horizontally with this one. And if we need to resize the logo, we can deselect everything by clicking in the canvas, then select the logo, and we can resize using one of these corner handles. Holding Shift keeps it centered, and Control locks the size ratio. And we can zoom in by holding down the Control key and scrolling up the mouse wheel. And to pan, we can hold down the mouse wheel and move the mouse. Alright, so the light in this image is coming from the left side. This means that, in order to make the logo look engraved, we want to add an inner drop shadow to the left side of the parts of the logo, and we want to add an outer highlight to the opposite side. So first, for an inner drop shadow, let's go to the Squares and Rectangles tool and create a rectangle covering the entire logo path. Let's make it black. We want to put the rectangle under the logo path, which we can do by switching to the Select tool and clicking the lower selection one step button here. Now let's select the logo path and duplicate it again with Ctrl D, then hold Shift and select the rectangle. Let's go to Path, Difference, which cuts the logo out of the rectangle. Okay, now we want to zoom in even more, then while holding Ctrl to restrict the movement on the horizontal axis, let's move the rectangle to the right just a bit. Okay, next we want to duplicate the logo again, then hold Shift and select the rectangle. Now let's right click and choose Set Clip. If we bring this up one step by clicking this button, we can see that this leaves us with a black path along the left edge of the logo parts. Okay, and we want to blur this a bit, so let's open the Fill and Stroke dialog, then use the Blur slider at the bottom. About 10% should be good. We can also lower the opacity down to about 75%. Okay, next, we'll make the logo path look similar to the image, but slightly darker. To do this, let's first select both the image and the logo, and duplicate them. Now let's select just the image, and go to Extensions, Raster, HSB Adjust. Let's go ahead and check Live Preview. All we want to do is darken the image a bit, so we want to have Hue on 0, Saturation on 100, and change Brightness to about 80. Okay, let's click Apply and close it out. Alright, now we want to hold Shift and select the logo, then right click and choose Set Clip. And if we lower this one step, we can see what it looks like with the shadow. Alright, for the highlight, Let's lower this again to put it below the original logo path. Then let's select the path and raise it to the top with this button. Now let's duplicate the path and make it white. Then let's zoom in some. 
hold control and move the white path to the right just a bit. Alright, let's send this below the blue path. Then hold shift and select the blue path. Let's go to path, difference. Let's lower the opacity of this to about 60%. Okay, and now we have an engraved logo. Alright, now let's say we want to make the logo look like it's popping out of the paper instead of being stamped in. To do this, we'll need to kind of do the opposite of what we did with this version. To see what I mean, let's go ahead and duplicate the image and bring it down here. Then let's duplicate the original logo path here, hold shift and select the image, then go to the align and distribute dialog and align them vertically and horizontally. Alright, so for the drop shadow, this time we want to put it where we put the highlight on the stamped in version. To do this, let's duplicate the logo and make it black. Then let's zoom in, hold control, and move it to the right a bit. Okay, now let's send this down one step. Let's use the fill and stroke dialog to give it a slight blur. We only want to do about 5% here. If we go too high, it will start to show on the opposite side, which we don't want. We can also lower the opacity to about 75%. Okay, and this time, we want to make the logo look like a brighter version of the image. To do this, let's select both the image and the logo and duplicate them. Then let's select just the image and go to Extensions, Previous Extension Settings to open the HSB Adjust dialog. This time we want to set brightness to something higher than 100. About 120 should work. Okay, let's click Apply and close this out. Then let's hold Shift and select the logo, right click and choose Set Clip. And let's send it down one step to get to the original logo path. Alright, for a highlight, we want to put it on the inner part of the logo's left side, like we did with the shadow on the stamped in version. Okay, so first, let's create a rectangle over the entire logo. Let's make it white, and put it at 100% opacity for now. Then let's go to the select tool and send it down one step. Okay, now let's duplicate the logo path, hold shift and select the rectangle, and go to path, difference. Now let's zoom in some, hold control and move the white path to the right a bit. Alright, now let's hold shift and select the blue path, then let's right click and choose side clip. Let's lower the opacity to about 60%. Alright, that should do it for this video. And of course we can do this with all sorts of surfaces, so have fun with it. Thanks for watching.